move on to two case studies in the conservation of soil. The first one is Oroville. This Oroville is just in Tamil Nadu very close to Puducherry. It is about 15 kilometers from Puducherry. And uh, this was founded by a French lady, Mira Alfasa. The basic important thing about this is, it was a barren plateau, which you would call as or wasteland and this is converted into a beautiful green belt area. This green belt area resulted in a vibrant ecosystem. How did this form? It formed with a vibrant ecosystem. This is the basis of Oroville. And so when they started, it was just a barren waste land. They, this Mira Alfasa, she got it with the help of the government of India and funded by also by UNESCO. It was a development that came up uh, and uh, she started with the help of cooperation of many other countries, people from many other countries and including India, they came down to this place and this was the plan of this place. This is how the place looks. In the center, there is the tomb, that's the Auroville tomb. Then you have the peace area, then you have industries here, there is a culture zone here, there are residential areas here, okay? And outside this, the st most standing thing that we are going to learn about is the green belt zone that's that extends about 1.2 kilometers width outside this zone the width of this is 1.25 kilometers it stretches and this green belt zone is what makes it a vibrant ecosystem remember it is just a barren land okay so they started digging wells then there was rainwater harvesting and when they started rainwater harvesting the groundwater recharge also happened and usually when there is a groundwater recharge automatically you can have chances of a lot of greenery around and this greenery included orchards, farms, vegetable and what not. A lot of other trees were there. So all these were there including some dense forests also. There was forest cover. All these things came in. This zone was called the green belt. And it actually gives employment to about more than 5,000 people. Now the number should, must be more in around 50 villages around this place. Many number of people come down from all the villages surrounding Oroville and they are employed in this place. Now they are also aware of the natural resources that is they make use of solar energy and wind energy. So they have their own windmill and they generate electricity then there are solar operated cars that go around the area and so they take people around in solar operated cars and they also have a seed bank 
that provides a lot of seeds of different kinds to the people around this place and also for the green belt area. So all these things convert this barren plateau into a beautiful vibrant ecosystem that's the Auroville. This is another example, another case study, Tarun Bharat Sang, which is shortly known as TBS. Okay, this is another classic example of converting barren land into what is called as green gold. Okay. This was founded. Initially, there was a man called Rajendra Rajendra Singh. He was a, he belonged to a group of four friends. There were four people and they wanted to do something good. They came in, but when they started Telling the people about community development and development of forests, they discouraged them and the three people backed out. But Rajendra Singh did not give up. Okay, And his concentration was on Alwar district. Alwar district in Rajasthan. This Alwar district was having severe drought. This was somewhere in 1980s, 85. So people used to carry pots of water for miles together. They will take so long, so far, they would have to go to just get one pot of water. So that was the difficult situation there. And when Rajendra Singh went and asked them to plant trees and change over, they first said, where will we go for water? And that is how this idea of Johans came in. Johans are semicircular or circular ones where water is stored, rainwater is stored there, and then it is used for a later date, that's rainwater harvested. Okay, now this Johats can be done this way. So what they would do is, there were small hillocks there and they would build a mud barrier here so that the water gets collected in this place. The excess water flows out whereas the water that's being collected stays on. That is available throughout the year for all their uses. So the groundwater also increases. So it, groundwater is recharged, increases. Not only that, there was a green cover, meaning a lot of plants and trees and everything came up. This is another way. See the rainwater catchment area from there, they have built a trench kind of thing where water gets collected and automatically groundwater is recharged and the excess is being used and sometimes this is also pumped up. There will be a pump pump here where from here the motor will pump up the water and it will supply it for the cultivation of crops and other things. Okay, So that is about this TBS. This is a non-governmental organization that was started in 1985. Now we have more than 400 Johans. More than 400 Johans are present and it has completely changed the picture from a barren land into a green belt area where you have a lot of vegetation, lot of trees and other things and because of the trees the rainfall also has increased. So that is the advantage of TBS. To conclude, Tarun Bharat Singh Sang is a, an NGO that was founded by Rajendra Singh who still heads this organization. 
and he has been responsible or the key person to convert this barren land into green gold and because of that the groundwater has increased and the green cover also has increased and a lot of johars are still springing up so that every bit of rain is made use of.